I'm going to talk about thermal tumescent state of the art. I do not have any conflict of interest. Endovenous thermal ablation is a frequently used method for treating varicose vein. Laser is the most frequently used, followed by radiofrequency. Endovenous thermal ablation hit induce a wall vein thrombotic occlusion. And finally, the fibrosis vein of, the, of its wall. What about the modern era of endovenous ablation? It presents thermal and tumescent, such as laser or radiofrequency, and then steam, and the other not thermal, not to, no tumescent, that I'm not going to refer in this talk. What do we have to do? We have to perform an ultrasound previously to any kind of treatment as a rule. We have to speak with the patient and explain everything, a detailed explanation, and then, of course, give to him a written informed consent, and it should be signed it before we perform any kind of treatment. We have to perform photo documentation, pre-procedure, intra-procedure, and post-procedure treatment. We, we have to try to get the better and functional aesthetic result. We have to try to do it always. Augmenting reality on transdermal illumination or ultrasound guided uh, procedures should be performed in the access point in order to avoid complications. Patient must follow the discharge instructions and, of course, uh, postoperatory ultrasound surveillance checking for complications such as EHU should be done. This is how we do the venous mapping and the cartography and it's mandatory to perform in any kind of treatment. We perform the procedure in a surgical uh, scenario with uh, all the re Argentinian regulations. This is how we do it. And endovenous laser ablation or radiofrequency ablation is with local and tumescent anesthesia, is with a thermal generation equipment, and of course with a compression hosiery. We do it for two to three days, class two compression uh, devices. What about the tumescent anesthesia? We perform it ultrasound guided uh, administration of the tumescent anesthesia. We can do it manually or using a pump. We do it with 450 uh, ml of saline solution, 20 lidocaine, a 2% solution, 10 ml of bicarbonate, and one, uh, 5 ml of uh, dexamethasone. This is how we do it, <coughs> ultrasound guided procedure. This is how we inject the tumescent anesthesia in order to protect the skin from thermal injuries reducing the volume and the size of the band and adding uh, local anesthesia favoring the effect of tumescence. We perform an ultrasound guided tumescent anesthesia, separate the vein from the skin, then ultrasound guided into the great saphenous eye and 10 cc per centimeter of vein treated. We, uh, there is different type of lasers, fibers, bar tip, chocolate tip, radial tip, double ring, two ring radial fibers. And there is also different devices of uh, radio frequency, closure fast with a seven uh, centimeter catheter and bend close with a 10 uh, centimeter heating cold catheter. There are different approaches and access uh, and puncture sites. We have the extended approach into uh, we ac we access into the vein with the distal with malleolus, and we have the suprapatellar access. And which which access depends? It depends of the distal reflex point that we find in the preoperatory ultrasound venous mapping. What about the position of the catheter? Radio frequency of laser. The catheter should be placed in between two to two point and a half a centimeter from the junction. This is how we do it, the procedure, and this is how we check uh, the post-procedure uh, closure rates. This is how we uh, do it, uh, an ultrasound follow-up in order to detect the exit. And this is a review of a randomized controlled trial comparing ultrasound guided form stereotherapy with thermal ablation uh, for the treatment of great saphenous varicose vein. This is a, a paper from 2016 from Bradbury. The thermal tumescent techniques present uh, anatomic, better anatomical success than ultrasound guided form stereotherapy, but the similar clinical success 
and the morbidity and complication are the same in both techniques. This is a paper from Britain, uh, a clinical effectiveness, a cost effectiveness at five years comparing surgery, form therapy and laser, a class randomized clinical trial. And at five years, endovenous laser ablation is cost effective followed by form and surgery. This is the Maradona trial from Hall of Wigen, a two-year result of a multicenter randomized clinical trial comparing mechanochemical and endovenous ablation, the Maradona trial, and what is said that radio frequency has the same at two years outcomes with the post-operatory same pain and the faster uh, venous clinical severity improvement at two years follow-up is the same but MOCA present uh, more hyperpigmentation and more anatopical failures at two years. This is the LAMA trial comparing endovenous laser ablation with mechanochemical ablation in the treatment of uh, in venous insufficiency. They present the endovenous laser and MOCA present similar venous clinical severity score. The same outcomes is a safe procedure. Is, uh, they present the periprocedural pain is similar, but at one year follow-up, they present <clears throat> more anatomical failures. What about the European College of Lebology guidelines for truncal ablation uh, by uh, Korsut, Boskurt? Uh, for the treatment of great saphenous vein reflux, laser or radiofrequency ablation techniques are recommended in preference to surgery or foam stereotherapy with a 1A recommendation. <clears throat> what about a five years? Radio frequency present 94.2 percent of occlusion rate and endovenous laser present 95 percent according to Rasmussen. The thermal tumescent incurred in current recommendation according to the International Angiology Guidelines, thermal tumescent at 1A and ultrasound guidance sclerotherapy are 1B. So in conclusions, uh, all endovenous uh, thermal procedures are safe, low rate of complications, no clinical significant differences between thermal ablation, procedures are almost the same, skills in ultrasound guided procedures are required, closure rate at low terms are almost the same, equal post-operatory uh, recovery are the same in, in both uh, procedures, but choosing one, which one is better? It depends on the physician preferences and in training in that procedure in particular. Let me invite you all to our next Congress in Buenos Aires in next year that is going to be held also the UIT World General Council. Thank you, thank you very much for your time. This is it.